morning, everybody. It is a beautiful Monday morning in the lovely city of Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Today, I've got to make a stop at Home Depot before I get to a job, but I wanted to talk about something that I get this question often now because it's happening more often. And the question is, CJ, what do I do when my contractor leaves me halfway through a job? Number one, that sucks. Uh, it sucks because when you have one guy running one crew and he knows exactly what needs to be done on the job, he knows exactly what materials need to be purchased, and he knows exactly what the time frame, at least if he's a real contractor, he should know exactly what the time frame will be. Might be off a day or two, it happens, you know, just weird things come up. But for the most part, your contractor should be on point with the bid as far as money and time. But what happens if the contractor decides that maybe he's not getting paid enough or um, maybe uh, he's uh, his guys are working too fast or maybe his guys are not showing up? That's the big thing right now. In 2018, 19, I've been finding it with my own crews. Uh, having people show up on time or show up at all or show up consistently, you know? So what do you do when your contractor bails on you? You know, you've already paid the guy and now you're short money, now you're short time, now you gotta look for somebody else and now you gotta probably fix some mistakes that he did or his guys did because usually when contractors leave a job, it's because, like I said before, they feel like they're not getting paid enough, they're worth more or they underbid the job and they just, they get halfway through and they realize, you know what, if I finish this other half of the job, I'm not gonna get like really any money out of it. I'm just paying my guys, kind of. So it's not really worth it for me to finish this job. And you know, too bad for you, buddy, the guy who's paying me and the, the client, the customer, but I messed up, sorry you gotta pay the price for it. So now you're stuck with a half finished house, might be your house, it might be a flip, might be a rental, whatever the case is, you're screwed, right? Well, a couple different routes you can take. And this is from personal experience. You can hire in a couple of handymen, okay? A couple of dudes that come in and finish what you need to finish. The problem I've had with that, most experiences with that, is that when I hire in some dudes, they don't know what's going on. They walk into a situation now com completely blinded because they don't really know. It takes them half a day to figure out the materials uh, or maybe a whole day to figure out the materials and then go back over everything that has already been done, whether it's been correct or not correct and left alone or fixed, which adds more time to the job. And you usually hire a single guy to come and work for you because that single guy, if he's not working, there's probably a good reason because everybody's working. And usually if you're finding a single guy, single carpenter, it's because uh, he can't hold the job usually with the crew. Um, what they'll tell you is, oh, I like to work alone, I don't like to, to uh, work with other people, and uh, I like to run my own jobs, and I like to make sure that everything's the way I like. It's not always true. It's not, most times it's not true. It's not true. They, they can't work with anybody or they get fired from every job. So consider this when you're looking for somebody very quickly to replace the guy that just ditched you. You might end up spending more because usually those guys, usually, sometimes you get lucky if they come highly recommended, but they're a lot more money if they do. If you're taking a shot in the dark with some guy that's coming from Cleveland or coming from uh, Baltimore every day to, to uh, help you with your project, then you gotta kinda ask yourself, why are they coming from Cleveland? Maybe they're not as good as they say they are. So be very cautious when you're hiring the single guy or two people or whatever. I always try and stick with teams. That way, if one of them disappears, I have two phone numbers. So I can call the other person and see like, where are you? You're not on the job. And that's the worst. When you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs and you're waiting for guys to show up and they don't show up and you've already got your day planned, you already have your week planned, 
you already have their tasks planned, your other guy's task planned, your task planned, and then one guy comes up short, let's say he's the electrician. None of you do electric except for Billy, the guy that didn't show up. So now you're stuck with plugs and switches everywhere, outlets hanging out, wires hanging out everywhere, live stuff everywhere, and your electrician didn't show up. So you got guys walking around the job now with live electricity because none of them are proficient in electric. That's why you hire a contractor who hires a team of people, a plumber, an electrician, an HVAC guy, a carpenter, a drywall guy, a cleanup guy, a demo guy. You don't have the plumber doing electric work. You don't have the electrician doing drywall work. So that's usually what happens when you get desperate and you try to get a guy to come and work and do the job for you. It never gets done right. So my suggestion is you gotta, you gotta bite the bullet and you gotta find another crew. It's not easy to find another crew. You might wait a week, you might wait two weeks, but I'll tell you what, and you're gonna pay more gonna pay more so be prepared for that you'll pay a little bit more maybe a lot bit more you might pay you might pay double I've paid double before just in a desperate situation to get things done I'm not endorsing Gatorade though I like Powerade so what you ought to do is get on your Craigslist get on your local real estate groups in your Facebook if you live in Boston you type in uh, Boston real estate investors it'll come up with groups and usually these groups will give you an opportunity if you're not a contractor if you just like some homeowner if you're just a regular citizen don't know anything about construction don't want to know anything about it you get in these real estate groups you join up and most of these groups have recommendations or you can post for a recommendation you can say hey I'm halfway through a rehab here's what I have left. I need to do two bathrooms and I have to finish a kitchen. And be as detailed as possible. Even make, I usually make a video if I'm searching for help. Like if I've got to grab somebody real fast, I'll make a video. So when they get to the job, they're not walking around looking at the job. Okay, oh, what do I do? You've seen the video. That's why you were hired. You said you could finish the work. So that's the first step. Finding somebody on Craigslist. I think you have to pay now $5 to uh, find somebody on Craigslist to help you, but Facebook is still free. Uh, LinkedIn, if you're not a part of LinkedIn, that's a great place to find people too. Um, I find friends, neighbors, family, they usually come to me, they tell me, because I do this for a living. They'll say, hey, Billy's looking for a job, Tommy's looking for a job, Susie's looking for a cleaning job, and I'll have something for them. But when it comes down to a full project that I've planned out over 30 or 60 days, and my guys are not showing up, you gotta change the game. Because as I said before, you could go with the, you know, the uh, fly-by-night guy who has a cell phone number that's like an area code from Las Vegas, but he lives in Cleveland. I personally wouldn't do it ever again because usually the waiting period that you have between finding a good contractor to replace your old one and that in between time where you have guy from Cleveland coming usually they mess the job up and it would have been better if you would have just not panicked and just waited even another week to find a crew that is reputable that's gonna show up that's gonna do the job it's not gonna rip you off knock it that's happened to me before too. take a deposit poof into the ozone you know wherever it goes in their crack pipe or their gambling habit or their sports bet whatever whatever they do I don't care but nobody likes to get ripped off so a lot of times when people get desperate they hire Billy from Cleveland with the Las Vegas number and Billy from Cleveland is the nicest guy in the world he shows up with this mullet and his uh, his uh, uh, bear painter hat and he's got all the supplies and he's got his truck and you're like yeah this Billy's gonna knock this out for me and then Wednesday Billy doesn't show up and you're like well I hired him Tuesday and Billy had to leave early on Tuesday like really early but he said he'd be back he's not coming back and that's what happens to a lot of people and these guys know it that you're not gonna chase them for a thousand dollars you're not gonna chase them even for five thousand most people the legal process of it is so ridiculous and it's so antiquated and it's so not in favor of the landlord or the customer the the thieves are very rarely pursued so my advice to you is pick a crew that you can communicate
communicate with, that you can call on the phone. Don't text me. Don't Facebook message me. I don't want any. Call me on the phone. Talk to me. Meet me in person, like human to human. Not over the phone, not on the internet. Human. I want a picture of the license plate that they're driving their car. I want a picture of their driver's license when I hire them. That way, if they decide to disappear, guess what? I know how to find them, as long as their license is valid. Do all the research you can. Go on the internet, type their name in. Find out from, from the real estate groups. Does anybody know Billy from Cleveland? Has anybody worked with him before? If the answer is nope, and you're in Cleveland real estate investors, and the answer is nope, guess what? Don't hire Billy, because Billy is gonna be heading back to Las Vegas with your deposit in a week, or tomorrow, or already did yesterday. Find someone reputable. Spend the extra time and the little bit of extra money to make sure that you're gonna have a quality job that's, number one, a finished job. Number two, you want it to be quality, but at least you want it to be finished. You don't want a half-finished job, especially if you're on the market in a time like October. You're not trying to wait till November or December to put your house in the market, because you know what? It's not gonna sell, most likely. So, my advice to you is don't panic, okay? Um, by the way, like and subscribe. You can do it like somewhere's gonna be like right in here. If uh, if this video is giving you any information, if it's giving you uh, any insight into how to not freak out, lose your mind, and uh, mess up your investment based on somebody else's decision. Remember, you are in control of this job. Get it together because it will suck, but get it together. They're not coming back. It's like a girlfriend that leaves and she doesn't even leave you a can of soup in the middle of the night and her clothes are gone in the morning. She's not coming back and neither are these guys. So don't sit and pine and wait. No, maybe they'll come back on Friday and wait by the phone and call and call. Forget it, they're gone. Hire somebody reputable. Make sure that you do your research. Talk to everybody you know. Make sure you are clear on what you want done. A lot of times when contractors bounce like this, it's great because it gives the client or the when the subcontractors bounce, it gives the contractor an opportunity sometimes to go back in, look at the project, and say, you know what? Now on second look, third look, fifth, fifth look, I never saw this before. But maybe we should put this here, maybe we should put that there. And you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm glad it worked out this way. It's gonna take a couple days to do this, but in that meantime, the crew that I, I'm hiring, they're finishing up a job. So they're gonna be coming to me on Monday. So I'll do what I can do. I'll get the materials. Um, I'll paint if I can paint. I'll do whatever skill I have as a homeowner to aid in the process of speeding it up. But don't get so involved that you think you're an electrician when you're not and start messing stuff up. If you wanna be helpful, that's great. But leave it to the pros. So in conclusion to this short educational video, um, be diligent, don't be scared. It will always work out as long as you are patient and you keep your wits about you and don't panic. Your project will get done, I guarantee it. And it'll get done when it gets done, but it'll get done. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. CJ goes live. I wish you the best of luck if you're watching this video and this situation is happening to you right now. I wish you the best of luck. Just hold on tight. It will be over before you know it, and you will have your property on the market. Thanks for watching. CJ goes live. Have an awesome Monday, folks.